Hi, second grade. So today we're going to be talking about severe weather. And here in Florida, we know what severe weather is, whether that's a hurricane or a thunderstorm that produces a tornado. But I wanna to talk to you specifically what it is and how to prepare yourself for it. So severe weather is any kind of destructive or life-threatening weather. So that could be a thunderstorm that can be destructive, meaning it destroys buildings or even just rips up plants. Um, and it has excessive rainfall that causes flooding or hail. Anything that can be life-threatening or destructive will be categorized as severe weather. That's why it's so important that you are ready and have an emergency kit available and put in a safe place to have you ready to go. So if you know that severe weather is on the way or you hear thunder or see lightning, get inside immediately, get your safety kit and go away from the windows. Make sure you're in a room away from any windows and things like that. For Miss Bender's house, that would honestly be a bathroom because our interior bathroom doesn't have any windows, but the rest of our house does. There's windows in almost every room except for the bathroom and the laundry room. So those would be my two options. Now, inside a safety kit, you could have several things. You need, first of all, you should have it in a thing that is all together. Now, I have a big old tub that has all my stuff in it. So I just pulled some stuff out of that tub today. That way it's easily grabbable and you know where it's at because when severe weather hits, you kind of get a little bit of what's known as adrenaline pumping. You start frantically thinking, what do I need? What do I need? And if it's all in one place, it's easier to grab and go than trying to find it throughout your house. So it's good to have flashlights. It's good to have extra batteries for those flashlights, just in case. Something that Miss Bender includes in hers that not everybody does and you don't have to, is a whistle. That way, in case I get separated from my family, I can blow the whistle. Or if I see a police officer or a firefighter or somebody that's able to help me and I need help, I can blow the whistle and get their attention. So I have all sorts of glowing devices. You can see some glow sticks in here that are run by batteries so we can hang it to us, especially if we have to move at night. There is a lamp in here that glows pretty well. It's LED, so it actually reflects really, really well. And then we have our regular flashlights. Something else that you should have in your safety kit is non-perishable food. Non-perishable means food that won't go bad. So it's always great to have fresh fruits and vegetables, but they go bad really, really quickly. So it's important to have something that won't go bad. So uh, my son loves SpaghettiOs. So we always try to put something in our emergency kit that's like a comfort food, something that'll make you happy. So we put some SpaghettiOs in our emergency kit. It's also really, really important that you have water because human beings cannot live without food and water for extended periods of time. That means long periods of time. So some options is to get a small water bottle like this and put it near your safety kit. Something that we do is we get a couple of these big guys and have them prepared and ready to go. So there's our water options. You should also have a first aid kit because you never know what you'll need. And that could include some hydrogen peroxide to clean out cuts and wounds, some band-aids, some neosporin, things like that. And then you may also want to make sure you have um, just some toiletry items. These are items you use to make yourself feel better and clean. So some shampoo, if you wear contacts like my husband does, make sure you have contact solution and extra case. Medicine, if you take particular medicine, make sure you have that in there and ready to go. So those are some items that you could have all stored together in a container in a safe place 
to make an emergency kit. That way when severe weather hits, you can grab that kit and go to the safest place in your house with no windows. But what's good about today, unlike days in the past, is that we actually can listen to the radio or watch TV and know when that severe weather is going to hit. We're able to track it, which is a lot different than in the past. So it hopefully won't be a surprise. It'll be something that you know is coming. Now, one of the severe weather options we talked about was a tornado, and we're going to actually make a tornado in a jar. I would recommend using a mason jar with a screw on lid, but Miss Bender doesn't have one of those here at her house. She has quite a few in the lab, but unfortunately we're not there right now. So I'm going to use this flip jar and hope I don't make a mess, but we'll see. You also need some water, <clears throat> Dawn dish soap, vinegar. Now, in the past, when I've done this, I've used regular vinegar, but here at the house, I only have apple cider vinegar, and we'll see if that works. Sometimes in science, changes work, sometimes they don't, and we learn from them. Um, in the lab, I like to use glitter because it really shows the destruction of the tornado and how it twirls things around. I don't have glitter at my house, sad but true story. Um, so I'm going to use rice. Now I have a little thing of rice here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's regular rice. Um, so I'm going to use rice and we're going to measure out what we need. Now my jar is bigger than a regular mason jar. So in a mason jar, you only need three cups of water. However, because my jar is so big, I'm gonna try four cups of water and see what happens. So you two will just have to see what you have and kind of adjust accordingly. And that means make adjustments that you see need to happen. So I'm gonna put, and I know it's bubbling. You guys might be able to see that already. It's because I practiced with my um, stuff once and the soap is still kind of in there, but it's okay, we'll, we'll be good. So we're gonna go ahead and there's my fourth. Now, you need one teaspoon of dish soap. Miss Bender only has a half, so that's one over two, one of the two blocks. Your numerator is the one, that's the one on top, how many you have. I only have one. The denominator, that bottom block, is how many you need to make a whole. So I need to go from half to a whole. How many do I need? Correct, two. I need two scoops to make a whole. So that means I need two pours of my Dawn dish soap to make one teaspoon. There's one. And notice how I'm not mixing it. Two, because you don't want to mix it just yet. You can dip your thing, your teaspoon in there to kind of get the Dawn dish soap off if you would like, but don't stir it up just yet. Now, I also need one teaspoon of vinegar and we're working with a half, so that means I need to do two drops to get my one whole teaspoon. So one, two, all right. So now you're going to add your glitter or in this case, my rice. And this will show the twirl, hopefully. Hopefully rice will work because it likes to float a little more than my glitter does. So we'll see what happens. Then you're going to secure your lid. So you either twist it on or in my case, I'm gonna latch it down and you grab it by the top and the bottom and you give it a good twirling shake. And as you can see, my tornado is starting to form in my jar. And see how it's already picking up my rice and kind of being destructive with my rice, which again, rice is kind of hard because it makes it a little bit foggy in my jar, but that's kind of the way it's, it is sometimes. 
But there you go, you have a tornado in a jar. So now that you've learned how to make an emergency kit, witnessed a tornado in a jar, it's time to head on over and take my five or six question quiz um, and see how you do, which I know you'll do great. Bye, second grade.